it's great that we have enemies created and it's great that we have levels created but if a game is just a series of walking from one combat encounter to the next that's going to get monotonous and boring quite quickly be much better to have different ways to break up that monotony with different aspects of the game. Over the course of this section, we're going to go over a couple of different ways that we can breathe more life into our levels. Over the course of this section, we're going to take a look at how to build an explosive barrel. We're going to learn how we can use triggers that we used in the last section for gameplay purposes by having doors that we can enter and close. We're also going to see how we can create elevators that the player can interact. To get started with, we're going to build an explosive barrel, which is one of those staples that are almost in every single FPS game, where players, after they damage it a bit, will explode and will allow players to turn the tide of battles, as well as have a really cool look when the game's going on. Over the course of this video, we're going to take a look at why we would want to prototype mechanics. We'll take a look at the death spawn objects variable. We'll learn about explosions in UFPS as well as damage modes and how that can be used. We'll learn about adding rigid bodies to objects and what that does as well as UFPS's exploding cubes. In games, we often prototype different mechanics to ensure that it works well before we dive into building it into the game proper. One of the things that we might want to do is have, you know, debug art assets and that kind of thing so that we don't have to spend time making those models if it turns out it's something that we don't want to do. So to give you an example of that, let's build an explosive barrel. To start off with this, I'm going to create a simple object, a cylinder object, by uh, going over to the game object window or the game object selection and then from there, I'm going to go to 3D object, and then I'm going to select cylinder. Now, it's placed away from our actual level, and we could use the translate tools like before, but I'm going to go ahead and use the vertex mode that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to hold down V, and then click and drag from the edge here to make it match the bottom floor of my game. And I can adjust as well if I need to as well. After this, this looks okay, but I think it looks a bit too tall. So I'm going to change the scale here to a 0.75, and uh, that looks pretty good. Now again, this object by itself contains a collider as well as a mesh, but it doesn't do anything all by itself. So what we can do is we can add functionality to this. Like for instance, we may want it to be able to receive damage. So we can make use of the damage handler class that we learned about previously in the series. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and select add component and then I'm going to type in damage handler or VP damage handler and we'll see it's right here. Now again, remember that by default max health is set to one, which will make it die very quickly. So I'm going to change this to a five. So it'll take a few hits before it actually explodes for us. And I'll modify current health as well to make sure that health sticks. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot here. And it disappeared. Okay, well that's a bit anticlimactic. And we, but we want this object to actually explode. And we could make a new class and extend from it like we did previously. But I want to make use of one of the features that the damage handler class has, which is the death spawn objects prop. And that basically means that when this object would die, when its health is zero or less, it will spawn these objects for us instantly. So what we'll do is we'll just spawn an explosion when this happens. And it just so happens that UFPS has some explosions created. So if we go into the base content prefabs explosions folder, you'll see that there's a number of different explosions that we can work with, such as crates exploding, grenades, and cube explosion, which is the generic one. And there are three different kinds, large, medium, and this regular one, which is the one that's right here. It's got a radius of 10, a damage of 5, 
and further away you are, it does less damage. So I'm going to go ahead and select my cylinder here, and I'm going to drag this cube explosion into the death spawn objects. So when I let go here, it's placed, it has a size of one. Perfect. And I'm gonna rename this object as well from cylinder. I'm gonna change its name to barrel. And we might wanna see what this actually looks like. So let's go ahead and hit the play button. So once we're in the game, we'll go ahead and shoot it a little bit. Awesome. We got a cool explosion already. And that looks great, but maybe let's see what this looks like with the enemies as well. So I'm going to go ahead and play the game now, and I am going to walk up to our zombie friends. And again, remember, as long as I'm close enough to them, they will continue to move forward. They got away. Let's bring them back. Here, zombie, zombie, zombie. Here, zombie, zombie, zombie. And basically, we lead them to this barrel, and then they'll have a fun time. Oh, fun times. Well, as you can see, myself as well as everyone else got damaged. So it looks like everything is working properly. But there's one other thing I want to talk about with these explosions. So if I were to select my explosion here, I want to point out that this class has a property called damage mode. And it's currently set to damage handler, which means that if any of the objects have a damage handler class, or a class that extends from it, it will do the damage on those objects. Now, if you're using something from the asset store, like an AI package, you may want to use Unity Message instead, in which case it would call the function that's dictated in the damage message name. And that would call that function so that it would work. And that's often something that you'll need to do if you get some other package. But for our case, the way that it is right now works perfectly. So another thing that we might want to do is currently the barrel doesn't really move at all. So I'm going to go ahead and add a rigid body component to this object. And that basically tells the physics engine, hey, I want this to fall. I want this to react to other objects pushing it. So now if I walk up to this guy and push it, it moves around like we could expect. And if I shoot it, works exactly the way that I want it to. So that's how we can create this mechanic purely but our own things. But one other thing I wanted to point out in UFPS is that there is a type of explosive object inside with UFPS. If we go to the search bar here and we type in explosive, you'll find there are some exploding cubes. Now, the difference here is that they have a component called VP Grab, which will allow you to pick up an object and move it around, throw it, that kind of thing. Now, of course, we can copy and paste this component as well and add it to our objects, but something I wanted to point out. 